What's going on guys? Mike here from Hammer Fitness. Just finished my workout. As you can see, I am absolutely saturated. I reckon I could wring this at least a cup worth of sweat. Now I want to talk to you guys today about what dictates a good workout. And a lot of the time, sometimes getting to a workout and having a real shit one would just put you off wanting to go back for the next one. It's really, really unmotivating. I've been there myself. Uh, where you just go in, feel like crab, try to push through, and then that's all you're thinking about the next time you want to go have another workout is like, it's, I don't want to go through that ever again. Now I want to give you some tips on what actually dictates an awesome workout, and it's things, it, it's pretty much just like I've said before, incorporating into a health, uh, fit and healthy lifestyle. You got to think about things like sleep, we'll go over that, nutrition, and maybe even supplementation as well. It's your main ones, uh, nutrition and uh, sleep. So beginning with sleep, I'm an eight hour person. You may be different and like I'll mention in any video, everyone is different. So I'm an eight hour person. If I don't get eight hours, I'm not at my optimal peak. Uh, so usually a, an average day I'll be operating off about seven. And if I get eight, well, gym, look out because I'll be absolutely destroying it. Uh, but usually works off about seven. Any less than that, I know I'm going to have a crap workout that day. Um, and then again, if you actually build yourself up to think you're going to have a shit workout, then you may as, may as well as well. So just be careful of what you tell yourself. I always try to tell myself I'm going to have an awesome workout. But sometimes you'll just get through to those days and it's just going to be a bad one. It happens. Uh, but you just got to push through it anyway. So what dictates uh, having a workout? How do you get eight hours sleep? Or how do you get your your peak amount of sleep. Now you obviously got to prep, make sure you go to bed on time. Uh, you may even include supplements like zinc, magnesium, um, a few other herbal teas that'll help you get to sleep. Even things like melatonin. Um, sometimes can be hard to buy. You should be able to find it online. That should be able to assist you to getting to what's called REM4, which is a really deep sleep. This is where a lot of reparation happens and you get optimal optimal growth as well uh, in muscles when you're in your deepest amount of sleep and that's that's pretty much when you dream if you dreamt then you know you got a good sleep or you at least hit stage four which is your final stage in the deepest amount of sleep so make sure you go to bed on time one maybe even try some supplements two donate two late before going to bed three um, and yeah, try not to try not to break your sleep as well. There may be some interruptions if you've got kids. Otherwise, uh, if you know you've got a weak bladder, don't drink water right before you go to bed. Maybe just leave a glass of water when you wake up so you can rehydrate straight away. Uh, other than that, that's sleep covered. So if you can get a good sleep, I always know if I get a good sleep, I'm going to have a good workout. Um, and I can definitely tell comparing any muscle group any day uh, hands down sleep is huge uh, when it comes to nutrition this is going to be massive as well if you don't eat enough fuel that's the key word there fuel if you don't eat enough fuel you're not going to have the fuel to work out uh, and a big one is timing as well I'm just going to go for a walk down the street timing as well so your main fuel source if you're not on a ketogenic diet or anything is carbohydrates and you can have that or place them around before and after your workouts majority of the time everyone's different as well um, so whatever I say as well you really got to find out what works for you this is just a general basis of what to go off uh, the advice I always give but if you let's say you want to eat a low GI meal like a sweet potato or brown rice or anything like that at least eat it an hour before you train because it's a low GI, it's a more complex molecule, it's going to take longer to break down. Therefore, you don't want it breaking down while you're trying to work out because while it's breaking down, you're actually using energy. Now, if you're using energy while you're also using energy trying to work out, you're going to feel like crap. All right, so you actually want the, the fuel in your body ready to use when you work out. All right, so at least an hour, but this is going to differ between person to person so really got to figure it out try a few different times few different uh, foods as well all right not all foods are the same definitely not 
So see what it's like with sweet potato, see what it's like with brown rice. Uh, if high GI works better for you, try fruit. If it's some simple sugars, like even if it's lollies, sometimes might, that might even do good as well. But um, yeah, high GI might even work for you. So high GI, because it's a more simple, comp uh, simple molecule that breaks down a lot quicker, it's a lot readily available. You can have it pretty much as soon as you work out. So maybe even 10 to 15 minutes before, if you have pre-workout, have it alongside your pre-workout and boom, there's your energy. But just know, when there's a fast up, there's a fast down, which is why I usually prefer having a low GI food. Uh, so it's a nice sustained energy, but as I said, you've got to have it at least an hour before. Um, and again, so this is literally just before and after training. After training, you want that uh, insulin spike, so you get that nutrition, um, nutrient delivery as well, because uh, insulin pretty much directs all your nutrients, including protein and your good fats and stuff. Uh, so you definitely want that before and after, that's crucial. But around for the rest of the day, depending on what diet, any diet's going to work, but if you're on just a regular diet, just make sure that you, you time your foods just like normal. Uh, you wake up, you have your breaky, whatever it is. Uh, make sure that you're hitting your calories, your calorie expenditure, whatever it is. If you're cutting, make sure you're on that deficit. And that's where you really got to be precise with your carbohydrates if you're not on a ketogenic diet. Uh, if you're in a surplus and you're trying to build muscle, make sure that you're in a surplus and accommodate for the calories spent while you're working out. If it's a leg day, you're gonna be expending more, maybe a few hundred more, so maybe eat a few hundred more calories, whether it be protein, carbs, or fats. Really play around with your diet, see how you feel. Like I've recommended in other videos, uh, try my fitness pal, uh, just to track this way. If you track it, like I said, I couldn't recommend anything else um, better than my fitness pal. Like nutritionists pay thousands of dollars for this app, and you got it in the palm of your hands. Whenever you track, and it even goes for training as well, whenever you track, you know exactly what you're doing. And you can even put notes down in the days that you train, like I had sweet potato that day, I felt blah, blah, blah. And then the next day you have rice. Um, because there's so many factors, a lot of people get unmotivated because days accumulate that are so unmotivating and you have so many bad days of training when you could have just tracked it and you could have been like oh there's a trending pattern i was having that day that on that day and i felt like crap and i was having that again on that day and i felt like crap all right so there could be trending patterns that you could pick up instantly boom there's your answer you can switch it to another food and you can feel awesome and next thing you know after instead of wasting years you could pump that down into a few months know exactly what foods work for you what training works for you this is exactly why uh, tracking is important but back to the uh, back to my main subject I know I ran off a little bit but what depicts the perfect workout all right sleep nutrition all right, and supplementation if you want to is pre-workouts things like caffeine stimulating your central nervous system please be careful with this as well since it's a you pretty much stimulate your central nervous system with uh, working out as well now your sin, uh, central nervous system has a threshold just like anything else so if you keep pumping it in it's going to fry all right when there's an up there's a down and it, just like muscles they need recovery your central uh, nervous system needs recovery the whole body is just like one big balance all right you got to balance that shit out um too much is a bad thing too much of anything is a bad thing all right so that's just pre-workout anyway you and stimulus if you want to regulate your lactic acid a little better try a better alanine um that's just gonna flush out it may even make you feel really tingly as well um, and my other recommendation is probably L-arginine, so your main ones, yeah, beta alanine, caffeine, and L-arginine. That what that's going to do is actually vasodilate or make your veins bigger, uh, so there's more blood flow. More blood flow means more nutrients, more energy, and the list goes on on the ripple effect. Um, but that is it, guys. That is going to what uh, dictate your good workout, an awesome workout. All right, make sure you get your sleep, supplements, timing, everything nutrients again timing right foods track that shit 
and yeah supplements if you really want to hope you enjoyed the video guys hope that helps let me know how you go hit us up on facebook um i'll see you guys in the next video